As somebody who was research curious a number of years ago, especially since I entered into ac academia and realizing, oh, cool, there's a great world out here. I, the famous researchers that I was the first aware of were people like Adam Grant uh, through and Cal Newport and people that showed up on you know, the TEDx stage. It really gave a story uh, to their research and to the, uh, you know, the research of others. However, I, I was very, very uh, surprised to know that perhaps, you know, the success on the TEDx wasn't necessarily, um, you know, related one for one uh, with their success as, you know, quote, their success as um, academics. So do you want to tell me a or tell us a little bit about your uh, TEDx study? Oh, that's a good one, Sam. I haven't looked at this paper in so long. I, I can't. I, don't oh, and I, I should preface this. I'm so, so sorry. But, uh, Philippe but... does <laughs> and 20s and hundreds of projects. So like he's involved in so, so much when I say it's 40%. So yeah, I am going to put you on the spot a little bit, but if you want to say pass, we can do that too. No, no, I think I, th I, th I can talk generally about, about, you know, the correlation between or the different ways in which science or scientists, you know, produce, disseminate knowledge. And, and, you know, there is this one view that is the bibliometric view that like, you know, historically we add citations to measure your like number of publications. Oh, that's, that's a very productive researcher, but is, is his research X, is he really good at, is, does, he publish, does he publish good papers? Oh, we have citations. So if a citation, if another paper cites this work, it means that it was useful. So that paper is giving credit to that paper. And so if that paper gets cited a lot, then this is a good researcher. He published a lot of paper and gets a lot of citations. Super elite, right? And then there's elite institutions like Harvard, whatever. Why is that? Why is it historical? And there's lots of reason why, you know, Harvard and other elite universities are what they are. And then people, probably regardless of what they publish, but, you know, there's correlation. You publish a lot, you go to Harvard, but, but not, it's not a perfect correlation. Um, and then they can sort of like have this prestige status or whatever. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking about prestige now, but just to say, I'm talking about limits of the indicators. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and you might be a, the very, you might be doing excellent work that is recognized as excellent. And in a lesser known institution and still be awesome. So, you know, these indicators, I just want to put out there. Absolutely. They are not perfect. And there's, they tend to correlate a little bit. And then that's where we get all this nonsense where oh, like citations correlate with like qualitative assessment of someone's like eliteness. So then they are good measures, but they're, they're kind of very typical. But I guess, you know, you go on a TED Talk. TED Talk is a different forum. There's different audiences. They are, there's probably a correlation between, you know, being in a having visibility and then getting invited on a TED talk, but that has nothing to do with like how much science you you're publishing. Although it might hurt, so I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this time. We might want to cut this at the the the. Nothing is cut in post production. <laughs> no. Oh, geez. Okay. But but yeah, I would say. But I gave a talk earlier today about the diversity mm. of like forms of like engagement and impact and channels through which yeah. science gets disseminated. And, we know from that study that yeah, it's concentrated, and but some papers will get a lot of tweet, tweets. They'll be on Twitter all over the place, very popular, leading or part of a, supporting some global discussions on social media. Some will make the news, other will inform policies, and other will be highly cited. But those things are not necessarily the same. So you might be on a TED talk because you know some people, whatever gets you there. Maybe you're just working on a topic that is hot right now. And then you get invited and it gives you visibility and it might have an effect on your career, but it might not. I don't. So there's, there's, there's questions there, but, but it's just about, you know, I think for me, the diverse way in which, in which you can be scientist, you can be on Twitter, you cannot be on Twitter, but that, so there's this non-monolithic, non-monolithic, let's say, understanding of, of what it is to, 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 to produce and disseminate research, which is fundamentally our, sort of social role as researchers. Absolutely. And the thread that kind of ties all that together um, is impact, right? Oh, I thought it you were is... going to say chaos. Which is no, no, no it's beer. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's friendship. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's 
drinking beer and mourning the friendship that once was. No, but it's impact. It's like, how do we measure impact? What is impact? And, you know, when you talk about the, um, uh, the H index, you know, the kind of the mixing of two measures, how many papers did you publish? How many were they um, cited? And then looking at other measures of impact. So like, you know, myself um, before, you know, starting my doctorate being like, oh, I've seen that researcher on TEDx, you know, oh, I've seen this person here. Uh, oh, and other people maybe that are on social media. I've seen this on Twitter. And so to different people, depending on what lens they're looking at, what metrics are important to them, what in, is impacting them and their interest. And so I thought, you know, in reading the abstract, um, however, giving a TED presentation appeared to have no impact on the number of citations subsequently received by an academic, suggesting that although TED popularizes research, it may not promote the work of scientists within the academic community. So it's really important to know where uh, where the impact is having, and you know, knowledge mobilization is huge, and that's awesome. Uh, however, perhaps if your goal as a researcher is to maximize your citation score, uh, TEDx wouldn't be your venue, but your impact your on society might be awesome. It might, but it's a dangerous uh, thing, like because you could. The downside of that is that you can twist the thing and say oh that person is a superstar goes on ted talk therefore whatever he says is scientifically valid but you know there's a risk there too you know you you can be a superstar on twitter because you tweet a lot and you have a lot of followers and then we might sort of value this or 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 assign some sort of like expertise like oh this person is is, is knows it all right because yeah, because yeah, you yeah. can see it so that and then there's the struggle because in science if if we have if some people are known within their community as the authority and i everybody has some form of authority but you know there's a social structure and it's a bit complex but you know there are people that we respect as scholars in the field of metrics we have you know there's a core set of people that like we that are the founders of the field and then you know are very influential and then you know we trust their work and then yes. whatever and then that might not be the same person <laughs> that like from a, on social media maybe they're not there and then some other person is the guru of bibliometrics and that's fine but like there should be no gurus i think or like that <laughs> anyway sorry no 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 this is i don't great. like gurus this... no no it's great be. because yeah. my uh yeah, my lens definitely didn't, yeah, that it could possibly, uh, the negative would be to popularize somebody and see them as an authority when perhaps they aren't, you know, necessarily rooted in science or the rigor of science. So, yeah. you know, hoping that, hoping the places like Ted um, would, would vet, but, you know, you get a big enough venue, you get enough people, you get enough things and yeah, it's, it definitely brings in some interesting questions. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I would just, just to wrap this up, that, that part, uh, the point is, no single measure mm. will give you the old picture. So if you look at Twitter to find your expert, but don't consider anything else, well, who knows what you're getting, what you're finding. So combine sources, understand that nothing is evaluated and that the different channels will give you different windows on the reality that you're trying to capture. <clears throat> but that's what I would say to wrap this thing up. Absolutely, kind of like the, uh, the balance sheet and the income statement and the cash flow statement and different, yes, provide the like economic <laughs> reality of the business or okay. the organization. Okay. <laughs> all I'll right, all right, I'll move one. on.